let's kick it off. Welcome to the AMA tonight with Agoradex and Astromus. We have a stage chat live. If you ever have any question about the products, the future, or what we're talking about tonight, feel free to ask them. Uh, you can also raise your hand if you would like to speak, and then you can join up the stage and ask your question in voice, or you can use the chat and I will ask as many questions as I can gather as fast as possible. So first of all, um, I would like to start with our guests, with the Astro team. Would you mind to introduce yourself real quick, Vincent and Quintessa? Sure. sure. Uh, so my name is Vincent. I'm the founder of, of Astro. And uh, we started this journey uh, a year ago in the middle of the bull run. And uh, we believe we have a, a great game uh, concept with that we can't wait to show to the world. All right. Hi, I'm Kutasa. I'm um, one of the co-founders here at Astromust. Um, I am also wearing the hat of the uh, sort of CMO, um, head of marketing here. Uh, so I look after all our marketing and communication strategy and endeavors and deployment. And yes, I'm excited to be here this evening and can't wait to uh, uh, show more about what we're building uh, here at Astromust. Thank you for your time. And thank you for joining tonight and welcome to the Agora side of life. So from the side of Agora, we have here Pierre. Yeah. Would you like to so, take over? Yes, of course. So my name is Pierre, proud founder, uh, co-founder and CEO of Agora. So as you probably know, guys, like uh, Agora is a joint venture created like 10 months ago uh, with Swissborg, the first crypto wealth app in Europe, who has like more than 750,000 verified users and ultra top tier blockchain gaming platform, who has partnership with AMD, Ubisoft, Sandbox, and, and many more. Um, yeah, maybe like uh, Peter can also like introduce his, uh, himself like shortly. Same for for Marguerite for my team. Yeah, absolutely. Hello, everyone. This is Peter. I'm the the business business development lead at Agora Dex. Uh, you guys are probably familiar with my profile and my name. I'm always in Discord answering your questions and uh, interacting with you. So if you have any questions after AMA, don't hesitate to, to ask in general or just open a ticket with us. Fantastic. And Marguerite? She can, Marguerite. Speak. She can speak right now. Yeah, she's mute. I don't know. OK. What about so about thank you. Take the lead, class. Huh? If you can ask like uh, the question, probably like it would be like a good idea, like to start like with an introduction like to the game, and then we can speak about like the key factor factors, for example, that influence our decision like to to onboard like Astromast. We can also like talk about, of course, about like the NFT utilities and the future features uh, behind it. So yeah, sure. let's do it. All right. So let, let's let's kick off uh, or start with the the utilities or the the plans um nft um what are what are the the plans um when you accepted or when you planned this partnership in between agoradex and astromos what was the idea behind and where will this path be in the future vincent would you like to answer that from your side um, so yeah, so the um, the the decision uh, obviously to go with the Agora they're very close to our ecosystem. They they're building a great thing to to be extremely relevant in the in the DeFi and also in the in the gaming uh, world. Um, at Astromos, we have a, a very fundamental idea of how we would like to impact impact the gaming industry as a whole, uh, even from a Web two standpoint. So I believe we're bringing something quite unique. Um, so we're bringing uh, for the first time a uh, an ecosystem of games which is interlinked uh, through the storyline where people can play essentially all the type of games that they, they always 
and um, and in addition to that, we're going to have uh, cross uh, beyond from beyond the cross story. We're going to have cross uh, share, shareable like uh, progression as well as shareability of items. And um, and we discussed this uh, topic as well with the the team from uh, Ubisoft, and they, they 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 seem to recognize that there's a great value over there from the from the Web two gaming standpoint. Uh, because right now all, all the games are built uh, kind of a, as a single title, but we see with games like Roblox that ecosystem of game have a tremendous power to really be relevant and to gather a lot of people to play together. All right, uh, thank you very much for answering this. And what about the the, the future product, the future NFT you're you're trying to do or planning right now? What will be the main utility or the main goal you want would like to achieve? Exactly. So uh, Astromos, be, beyond uh, being uh, obviously this, this Web2 ecosystem, we also want to uh, make the Web3 very relevant. So essentially the Web3 is, uh, is kind of coming uh, as a support, like as a support function. The, the NFTs that right now are going to be uh, the main uh, topic is that we are releasing some collections of skins. Uh, they're very unique uh, because they... Um, First of all, they custom. We are able to do custom uh, skins which matches the um, each uh, like each community. So in this case, the community of uh, Agora will have like a custom design uh, NFT, which is in itself uh, quite a fit because if you think about what's going, what what else of this type of NFTs are out there, the only company which I see uh, do, doing that is company like Artifact, for example. So that in itself, I believe, is quite quite key to have those 3D avatar which are. Metaverse ready, we call them. So the 3D file is compatible with absolutely all game engines. And beyond that, they will be available inside our game ecosystem. Uh, beyond that, we'll, the, the, the NFT itself will have the, uh, they will be playable essentially with a custom login, which means that the community from Agora will be able to log in in game and, and will, will be able to recognize the, and their skins and they will be able to play with it. Uh, beyond that, they will have uh, forever better access to our uh, whole ecosystem and a lot of per item skins discount loot boxes and stuff like that um beyond that they will also have like um, a disc special discord role so they will have a specific uh, uh, kind of seat inside the community uh because we really want the web3 community to to kind of uh be able to be a kind of a, a centerpiece uh especially from the background perspective in whatever we are uh we are up to but uh, i guess the uh from the from the uh, in, uh, speculative or speculation from the Web3 part of the speculation and token uh, perspective, uh, the NFT, um, the big USP is that they, they, we're going to give the equivalent of the price of the NFT in must token. And uh, this is going to be at the, 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 the earliest uh, round, so the seed round, uh, the price is going to be $0.01. And um, for all the people in Web3, that is uh, definitely going to be a great opportunity. That sounds perfect. Yeah. Getting right. Yeah, if I can, if I can add something about uh, what you just said, like uh, Vincent, it's yes, like sir. also like, for me, it's really like something unique, like to add like in their uh, GameFi token drop, also known as like the most collection uh, lottery, uh, like, like, like you said, because uh, the lottery at the end, like 6%, and holders will experience like the thrill of a, a 3x token price. Uh, 3% will join like a 10x token price. So it's something important to mention. Uh, and 1% of, uh, of it like will be of the NFT holders like will be uh, an excitement of 100% x token price. So just imagine like turning a 0 0.01 investment into like $1 or even like transforming about 25,000 must uh, token as Vincent like just mentioned it into like an uh, astounding like 25k uh, dollars. So yeah, I think it's something important like to, to mention. It's something like really unique um, on the uh, NFT utilities that uh, Agora, uh, Astromos propose here. Well, that's crazy. And I think the big question here is who will be the lucky guy? It will be the lucky one percent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because that's, because about, about like the supply, huh? it's a very limited supply of one hundred NFTs. So, as you say, like you will have like one lucky guy at the end. Yeah. Who will receive 
like or will receive like 100 percent x but if you also have, have like a, a 3x or 6x it's amazing also perfect so one of the great and big challenges i see for being successful here is onboarding the web 2 gamers into the web 3 ecosystem vincent how do you how do you plan to actually bring those web 2 gamers into your ecosystem so yes i think it's going to, this is specifically what uh, might uh, become our strength so uh, let me unpack that a little bit um the first thing that uh, the first layer of understanding which i think is very important is um to understand that 50 percent of the old gaming industry to as per today is going through the mobile uh, this is why the first step uh, for astromers is to create a mobile uh, web 2 ecosystem uh, of gaming the the next important step to understand is to look at uh, the growth of different of different uh, project right now in the gaming industry and then if you look at the top 10 uh, games uh, we can see that uh, nine of them are single title and the thing about single titles uh, is that they have a, a finite uh, life cycle so they kind of bound to have an end at some point uh, but uh, the average in revenue among the top 10 is one billion dollar in revenue however among this top 10 there is one game that is uh, seem to forever grow uh, which which is uh, the beginning, which is the, the game called Roblox. And the reason why they keep growing is because they keep expanding their ecosystem of games. There's always a new game that is being added to the ecosystem. And that seems to erase the concept of uh, end of life cycle of a particular game because there's always a new one and it keeps uh, the momentum going. If you look at the growth of Roblox, it's essentially, uh, it never stops. There's no end in sight. <laughs> and essentially what we bring to the table is, 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 a, is a combination of the strength of those two worlds. So we're creating an ecosystem really similar to Roblox, which will appeal uh, essentially to everyone. Think from the uh, market penetration standpoint, imagine uh, that our ecosystem will appeal to any kind of player uh, um, once we're able to, to build it. And at the same time, um, unlike Roblox, which has no, no uh, true storyline or things like that, all the game, they actually tell a story. And actually, that is the strength of single uh, Talto games. So, uh, uh, like on, on paper, we really have something that is genuinely new as opposed to um, to do uh, another game of, of like almost like a copy of something that already exists. We are we're genuinely coming with something that, new, that is new and that does not exist in the world of gaming itself. Most, ga most, pro most projects are just uh, recycling uh, things that are already uh, around and trying to be successful that way. All right. Oh, well, this makes sense. Um, is there also something uh, you would like to add here uh, from the team of Agora, Pierre or Peter? I don't think so. Okay. Or P Peter? No, I was going to say, like, not really. I think Vincent, like, explained it really well. Right. By the way, I could, I could add a little piece of this just to show that it's actually not just uh, my imagination, but it's also happening. Uh, we did uh, with our little game demo on the App Store. So think about it. It's a little game that we created uh, uh, um, in a month's time. Uh, like, it took us a month to do it. Uh, we did a little experiment with it so we spent a thousand dollars in uh, in marketing and we got 40,000 downloads and 24,000 active users for the first month and uh, that type of traction is, is actually very very respectable so it just shows that there is a, an interest from the public uh, specifically from the web 2 community to uh, to a, a game such a, or a story such as uh, Astromost. Oh, that's very nice. That's that our that is some good data you 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 have already. Uh, since since those are, are starting to play around in your ecosystem, where and when will they step over into Web three? Is there like a specific um, zone or timeline they reach when they when 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 they can say they go over from Web three to the Web, web from Web two into the Web three? So uh, that's a very interesting point. So let me expand further on the test we did because I just told you kind of half of the story. Uh, in the game, uh, the game was actually what we call a play to mint. So essentially the goal of the game was to, uh, to, to earn a, a free NFT, which was kind of the reward from finishing the little demo. And uh, think about this, the numbers are very interesting. So out of 24,000 active uh, players, uh, only 1,200 players ended up uh, getting the NFT. 
um, which uh, which for us was really odd because the NFT was free. It was uh, pretty pretty easy. You just had to copy and paste your wallet, and you will you were able to mint a free NFT. So um, what we learned from that is that the the genuine Web two gamers uh, are, are not. Really Really, uh, the prospect of uh, speculating that much or this uh, the web three aspect. It seems that no, they they focus is mainly to have fun and play, which is what uh, we're providing. But um, essentially, even uh, they they actually ready even to spend money in the process. So when we uh, then uh, started to look into who were the profiles of those uh, people that uh, uh, minted the NFT, we realized that there was two categories very clearly. There was on one hand the retail investors which are motivated by the, the idea of, of investment and the prospect of return. And there was another category that we call the play to earners, which uh, they, uh, they see the game more like a, a potential work in which they can uh, generate a value. And, uh, and then, and then, but they're not essentially interested to invest as such. So what we realized is that we had a unique opportunity to connect those three type of people in an ecosystem that everyone brings value to each other. So think about this. Uh, the gamers will be playing, they will have fun, they will be uh, purchasing uh, in-app purchases, then we'll have the, the retail investors essentially that can invest in the project, uh, speculate behind the scenes, and essentially um, and, and get some return from it all by uh, uh, helping us generate even more funds to develop the project. And uh, we, we also have the, the play to earners, which will be able to play a Web3 version uh, of the game where they will be able to, uh, to unlock specific items in the game and sell them through the in-app purchase system to the Web2 players. So it's not like as if we are planning to uh, necessarily force them to cross from one category uh, to another because they seem to be very distinct in terms of demographics and where they live, etc. For example, the play to earners are usually from the third world countries, whereas the web to gamers are usually from Western countries and the, the web three investors, they're usually a bit more uh, mature people that, that have a bit of money and they want to invest, but not necessarily interested in gaming uh, as such. You can see that um, our, our goal is not necessarily to, uh, to to force them to cross from one to another, but wherever your uh, your situation is, whatever it's your um, your 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 context, we are we are making a space for you so that you can get a value as well as providing value for the rest of the users. All right. So <clears throat> if I understood that correctly, you had so you, you said one thousand two hundred minted the NFT, and the other 23,000 who played the game as well, uh, if I think uh, it was 25k, if I remember correctly. Um, yes. Why didn't those mint then? Like, were so they basically, introduced to the process to like, I, I mean, they needed a wallet before, but if, if those people would be Web2 gamers and they don't have a wallet yet, were they introduced to the step how they can mint? So uh, at the end of the game, when you when you build your robot, there was a prompt to say uh, copy your ERC, uh, put your ERC uh, twenty one mm -hmm. wallet to mint uh, the NFT. So uh, we we know that uh, from the web three perspective, that to create let's say a MetaMask wallet for you to get a uh, uh, ERC twenty wallet is very uh, straightforward. We did have uh, some little tutorial of how to do it on our website back then, uh, but uh, nevertheless, we did uh, just. Just looking at the data, we actually asked the question to the users. We actually ran a survey. And uh, turns out the uh, interest of the Web3 was just, uh, from the Web2 gamer perspective, was just not not really there, essentially. Okay. So it was like, they were, think about this. They were, they were looking at order of priority. For them, it was fun and I don't mind spending. For people that interacted from the Web3 perspective, the number one was the prospect to to get some return. That was like the first uh, uh, thing that, that was interesting to them. And for a subcategory of the Web3 people was how can I just earn a revenue just by playing? But it was again, it, so think about it, out of the 1,200 people that minted, it, they, were, they were shared by the retail investors and the play to earners category. All right, all right. Well, that's interesting. Uh, interesting data to hear. Thanks for sharing this data. And for the community. I'd like to add one more, sure. like to add one more thing. Yeah. 
if I may. If you if you look at at it uh, from like um, I don't know like more like for zoom out perspective, it actually it's actually very good. Uh, the reason is that if you're building a, a Web two plus Web three ecosystem uh, to make the game um, uh, having a uh, a good economy, you need uh, an influx of revenue coming inside the system. And essentially, that is what the Web2 gamers are willing to provide, given provided that they have fun. So it, by, by having that uh, in, inside the business model, it creates a very healthy uh, structure that then the whole Web3 ecosystem then makes sense. Because if you think about a game that is completely and uniquely uh, Web3, it, the only per, you, it's, it's like the, all the players are made of people that uh, essentially want to earn from it. So it, it, it's uh, directly or indirectly create that, uh, what we saw with Axie Infinity, indirectly like a pyramid scheme where everybody wants to earn, but whoever is first get more, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, I think that's a big problem there. All right, so uh, for the community again, if you have a question, <clears throat> feel free to raise your hand or to use the AMA chat, the stage chat to ask your question. If either if it's for us or must or a Gordex or the partnership. So let's go on with uh, the partnership of the two projects. From your side, Vincent, from Astromast side, um, what values do you expect from getting in this partnership? So I think there's a there's a lot of value. I think um, the whole Web3 space. I think the the Agoradex is inside. It has a unique um, uh, ability to reach out to li to literally the, the like everyone. So on one hand, they being a Dex, they have access to exchanges. They have access to hold the DeFi ecosystem and being connected as well. On the other side, with the the, the gamers, the guilds, like they essentially they they can be uh, that glue that can uh, really enhance um, everything initially from the retail perspective, uh, investor to the play to earner perspective. Uh, and also uh, why not to onboarding as well, if, if some Web2 players want to double into the DeFi which, or the Web3 space, which we know it's also happening, although it's a bit slower than we thought, but it's still happening, then they can provide all that support. And, um, and I think it's very key because the, by being kind of uh, in between all the, all those uh, ecosystems, which are very key to the space, uh, and I think that the value is truly inside in the synergy of all those different uh, uh, groups or, or or features that the space offers. And I think that's that's the massive uh, place that uh, Agora can play. All right, uh, Peter and Pierre, would you go? <clears throat> would you agree that Agora can be, uh, as Vincent said, like the glue? For, for that project, um, what, 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 what plans are from your side, from the Agora side? What would happen in the next phase? Yeah, absolutely. I can I can take that one. I think um, we completely agree with uh, what Vincent said just now. Like you know, there are a lot of values shared between um Ultramus and the agora ecosystem being a gamefi ecosystem our essence is to bring uh, the most promising games um you know such as Ultramus into our ecosystem where we can present it to our um community members where they can you know engage with the with the game and also just to be more involved with web3 gaming we need uh it's already so difficult to um to transform Web2 players into Web3. So we've got to keep or kind of continuously to grow this uh, ecosystem and then we can all do it by ourselves. And uh, with amazing games like Astro Must, we're just going to keep moving forward together. And uh, something Vincent said earlier, um, like five minutes ago about this whole um, economy of the game fight uh, space, like it's so important because um, as we have seen from so many games that have failed, like, you know, they just use play to earn to use it as a marketing strategy and to attract people to come and play. But essentially the game, it's not fun. It's just the tokens that the players are looking after. And then eventually just to kind of make money off of it. That's not a sustainable way for Web3 gaming. And then we need like, you know, those kind of Web.5, let's say like, you know, a bit of a Web3, um, kind of system involved, but also the game itself has to be really fun. And then we really look for those games to onboard to our decks. And then we're 
I'm really happy about this partnership because we believe um, we're, you know, showcasing uh, Alstromust the right way. And also at the same time, Alstromust is showing our community members that we are really bringing the best of the best to our ecosystem to um, continuously push for this Web3 gaming uh, forward. Oh, perfect. I think this should also be like a motivation for the gamers as well to join Web3 if the game is actually playable and if it makes fun. And if not, the whole reason to play the game is uh, earning tokens. I think this is something a lot of projects are struggling with. Having a, let's say, playable yeah. game, but not really repetitive or fun or competitive. So people m m might play it, but mainly with the motivation to earn the tokens. And I think if you really want to get the Web2 gamers, your game should actually make a lot of fun, even if you're not, and earn. Besides, yeah, that could be an option, but mainly have a fun game. Absolutely. Uh, I would like to add something think... on that, if I may, after. No, finish first. No, I was going to say, like, absolutely. I think, you know, um, you know, gaming, gaming, why do people play games is to have fun. Like, you know, the fact that you can earn money at the same time, like, it's beautiful and all that. But, you know, we have seen from so many games that have failed. Like, I'm not sure if everyone uh, knows Cathian Gaming. It's a Hong Kong based company. They raised so much money. Then eventually they weren't able to carry out the fun game. And now, now they're just, you know, for like you know transforming into different um kind of ecosystem which is a shame because um you know leaders like that in the space you expect them to do a lot of um good like you know bring out actual fun games to compete with web 2 in, to some extent but uh well yeah it's uh it's really about the game you know people will stay when the games are good not uh, when they can our money for now and then when it's in a bear market it doesn't mean anything vincent, Sorry, vincent. to add something as well yeah. uh, to be fair what you, do, what you just said is a perfect introduction to what i wanted to say is that um astromos is a uh, is really the the dis distinct in that in that in that context for, for example we not we are not part of those games that raised millions uh, and 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 but the, the, nevertheless, we have already uh, built uh, two games: one a little demo and one playable game, a shooter game, which is available on PC and and uh, and Mac, uh, which uh, which is very fun. And to, to talk about the fun, we had a um, a professional Twitch uh, streamer uh, that was supposed to talk about five game, and Astromos was one of the games that he was testing for the community to to try out. And uh, turns out he had so much fun playing that actually he didn't play any of the five games he was supposed to play. He only played for the whole hour Astromost, uh, the shooter game. So I think it's a, it was a great testimony that uh, that uh, although we have like we have, we have not gone through ICO, we haven't raised like millions, but at, but at the same time we are displaying the philosophy of we are builders. We are here to do things we're not just going to be waiting to just raise millions and maybe in two years or three years we, we have something going on but we have stuff going on right now that you can see and touch and try and see whether it's fun and all that and i can even add a tiny bit to it uh, we also went as far as creating a very massive metaverse on special.io more than a million uh, meter square of metaverse space uh, we already got like more than 3400 visitors across six maps and we ranked number one uh, three times worldwide I think what I like to say is that uh, uh, we are very early in terms of how we, in terms of we haven't raised millions and everything, but in terms of maturity of what we've already built, we are displaying uh, more than what's out there. I mean, a lot out there in the in Web three space. All right. Um, there is a community member who would like to join the stage. Maybe ask a question. I will invite him to space to stage. Mr. Conso, you're on stage now. Oh, your headset is off. You maybe can't hear us or also can't speak. By the way, for example, there's somebody in the community right now in the in the crowd. I can see uh, Fajeron, for example. It's a great example of a community member that is building with us. So we're very close to the community as well. For example, he's designing uh, guns, weapons, tools that are all going to be implemented uh, in the game. Actually, if you play the shooter Astro Royale right now, 
all the guns that are there have been built by the community. And that's another aspect as well that we'd like to bring to the table because it's totally not excluded that, for example, when you think about uh, the guns that have been designed or the object that's been designed by the community, in after a while, they would be able to get some uh, royalties from it. They would be able to, to get some rewards from it. So there's so many ways that even the community can be involved building with us and having fun as well. And it, it's kind of like, it's, it's super good for for you know to do to be together and have a story together it's like we we we're doing it as a community not just alone thank you for that additional comment i think it make, it makes a uh, uh, really sense uh, to to bring the community in and uh, as you said that they can create stuff in the ecosystem as well so let's go for like let's go the next step for the um, project the Astro Must, um, the available on OTC trades. So, what does the user have to know if he participates or starts participating in that? Um, so, yeah, the first thing that I think is important, but I guess Pierre uh, can speak a lot as well on this. But essentially, uh, they need to know that uh, the NFTs that are coming, they're going to be uh, on uh, U on US uh, on Ultra, essentially, in terms of gain. Um, and uh, yeah, in terms of the utility, we already discussed it. The 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 the, the probability to have like uh, even some special NFT with up to 100x is there. Uh, but I think what, one of the key things that I think is really cool that helps unite uh, communities is this idea that we have definitely, uh, the NFT itself holds a lot of value beyond the equivalent of token they can get. So I think it's really uh, unique from, from multiple perspective, because if we, if we look, if we take in consideration that we're very early, but we're building a lot, so that I think people can see, uh, at least can have an idea of the potential behind it. And I think that that's really key. If Pierre, you want to add something, feel free. Yeah, of course, I can add like something about like the minting process, huh? how you can like participate and buy like one of the 100 NFTs. Uh, so as you know, huh, there are like uh, two phases of the minting process for community members. Uh, the first round is uh, is in progress now. Uh, we just announced like uh, by the first game and launched like the accelerator one week ago right now. So it's an OTC deal. Uh, as uh, so I'll just uh, explain you guys, so exclusively like for uh, the Agora NFT holders. And uh, you have like a form to complete first uh, your application. And as I just mentioned, you like it's now live on our accelerator page. So you just have like, to go on the website, www.agoradex.io, then on the accelerator page, and you will find like the form there. And just to explain to explain you more in details on how it works. So for the first phase, there are like also like two rounds. Um, so the fund is a, a guaranteed mint huh, for holders of one Hydra uh, NFT or a minimum of uh, two uh, Medusa holders. And then you will have like a second round of the guaranteed mint um will be like for older with one medusa minimum or at least two minotaur and with uh with the maximum of 25 percent of the total uh, guaranteed allocation which means it will be like first come uh, first serve procedure for the for the one medusa or two more two minotaurs uh, uh, owners and uh, again, as uh, Vincent just explained, you guys will have like to own a, a new S wallet in the first place to participate in this. As uh, all NFTs will be like transferred to your your US wallet. So don't hesitate if you have like any more question. We are here for you guys. Yeah, and uh, just to add on to what Pierre was saying, uh, and I urge. Uh, want to go check out announcement it's a second latest announcement and then the procedure there is very clear and straightforward um and then also urge people to register for i mean from the audience or whoever is listening from this uh recording register as soon as possible if you're a hydra holder or two medusa holders uh, already half or i haven't checked um but more than even more than half i believe now i'm looking at it um have already registered for their interest um you can just register interest with uh, the link from the second last announcement 
uh, and check it out and then um, we'll check your eligibility. Maybe because, yeah. maybe, maybe because you can also like post the link here, there like this, like everybody has it. Sorry? It's posted. Okay, perfect. No. I you. would say like maybe Peter, it's a good idea if you can also like post the link directly on Discord. Like you probably already did it huh? for the community, but if you can also like post it, post post the link here, like this, like for people interested, they just have like to. to Peter, yeah, perfect. Peter did an announcement with the link already, and that just reposted now the stage chat. Perfect. Fantastic. So nice. So. As you as you hear from Peter and Pierre, if you own the NFT of Aurora now, you can start joining. Fill out the form. You need the Ultra Wallet, so you can actually get the NFT later. And as he said, fifty percent is already kind of gone. So hurry up if you haven't already. Mark your interest. Join. And if you don't have the NFTs yet, get them. Absolutely. All right, so if, if we don't have any questions from the community anymore, uh, is there something in the end you would like to add from the team of Astromast? Before we uh, close the call? For, for, I mean, sure, for, I mean, I'm, I'm very passionate. Like, I, I just want to say that um, I, I'm fundamentally a, a, a game lover. Um, you know, I've been reproached a lot to, to love game a little bit too much, but really what the vision of Astromos is, is to create really a fun game, a game that, that will match the, the, the um, essentially what, whatever is your game style. Uh, Astromos is, is, is planning to, to have that within the ecosystem. And uh, we focus a lot in the storyline. We focus about the different type of experience that people can get. And we are very, very much open. Um, so I think that's something that I really would like to put across is this uh, passion that in the community and myself, uh, we all have for, for, for the project. We, we really like the, the, this idea of you know, going to the moon. Like we, we, we just want to be explorers. Uh, I can see that in a lot of, even in um, in uh, in uh, in the community of Swissborg, there's a robot. In the community of uh, Xborg, there's now like this. Was this there's all this idea of, of of something that resonates with everyone. And essentially, that's what we're trying to bring to 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 life is this vision of multiple game interconnected, where the fun will be so maximized that uh, you 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 will feel like you don't even need like uh, to play a different type of game because whatever you're looking for, you'll find it here. Perfect. Thank you for adding this. And uh, as Marguerite just said, don't forget if you want to, if you would like to try to join the game, you can join uh, in the next uh, stage in the Elixir app to to test. And there is a question for Pierre from Mr. Console. How excited are you to have us from us as the first project on the launchpad? I'm super excited like to have it because uh, as you know uh, the Ago had X uh, accelerator we are with the accelerator we are like here like to aiming like a, an empower support and grow like the, the the most promising web3 project and we are convinced of one thing with all the Agora team it's like uh, Astromast is one of them so don't miss this opportunity guys perfect anything else you would like to add uh, before we are going to close from your side, Pierre or Peter? From my side, I think uh, it's okay. But Peter, maybe if you can, uh, if you want, like to add something, uh, go for it. Um, I don't have much to add. I just want to say, like you know, um, thank you, Vincent, for the presentation. I think you know he really showed his passion for his uh, for his product, also for the the future of Web three gaming. Um, so yeah, so I, I hope everyone is, uh, is in line, is convinced by, um, Vincent's vision, this, of the space. We're very aligned, um, uh, with the vision. That's why we also onboarded him. So yeah, I hope everyone, um, go and register for, uh, for your interest and then we'll move on from there and see what the future of Web3 Gaming will bring to us. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, yes, sorry, Pierre. Thank you, guys, for your time. No, no, I just like, excellent. Thank you, guys, for your time. It was a pleasure, like, to discuss with you, Vincent. 
and one more time but uh, stay tuned and don't miss this opportunity because it's it a play, play very exclusive only 100 thank you very much he has left the stage ciao ciao bye bye good night everyone thank you good night, bye everyone bye, -bye.